Hi, I'm Manesh Patel from Duke University and I'm here at the Heart.org booth at the American Heart Association Scientific Sessions in 2011. And I have the distinct pleasure of talking to Dr. Samuel Goldhaber today with regards to the DOPS study. Thanks for joining me. Oh, Manesh, it's a pleasure to speak to you again. Thanks. Can you tell us about the background and the rationale for the ADOPT study? Sure, but let me step back a little bit mm -hmm. because not all cardiologists are up to date on pulmonary embolism. Yes. So pulmonary embolism kills, in the United States alone, between 100,000 and 180,000 persons every year. Yeah. And it's actually the third most common cardiovascular disease after myocardial infarction and stroke. Wow. The Surgeon General has declared that for inpatients, pulmonary embolism is the number one preventable cause of death. Now, think of the denominator here. Every year <clears throat> in the United States alone, there are about eight million medical service patients who are at moderate or high risk who are hospitalized in American hospitals. So this is the pool of patients at risk. We've come a long way in reducing the pulmonary embolism rate in hospital, but the big <clears throat> unconquered frontier of these patients when they go home. And you know as well as I do that the hospital length of stay is getting shorter and shorter and shorter. So nowadays, patients are being discharged from the hospital on more venous thromboembolism risk factors than they ever had previously. And what we're trying to do in the ADOPT trial is address the patients really after their discharge to see whether extended duration anticoagulation prophylaxis can reduce the rate of venous thromboembolism and VTE-related death. So a great sort of important point for us to think about as cardiovascular physicians is just the risk of our patients for obviously PE and death as they go home earlier and earlier. Right. And there are probably more PEs and more DVTs out of hospital than in hospital. Absolutely. But of course, the breeding ground is the in-hospital experience. Great. So tell us what that led to with the ADOPT design. So the ADOPT design is on medical service patients, the ones that you and I treat every day, congestive heart failure, respiratory failure, pneumonia, mm -hmm. patients at really high risk. 45% um, of them were obese with BMIs greater than 30. Mm -hmm. And ADOPT randomized more than 6,500 of these vulnerable, frail patients into two groups. One group received anoxaparin 40 milligrams a day for prophylaxis for 6 to 14 days, mm -hmm. plus a placebo for the oral anticoagulant apixaban for 30 days. The other group received from the get-go a pixaban, um, 2.5 milligrams twice a day for 30 days, and then placebo injections of anoxaparin for 6 to 14 wow. days. Uh, they were all supposed to get venous ultrasounds of the leg at day 10, and a final mandated venous ultrasound exam at day 30. At the end of the day, when everything was tallied up, uh, the risk of total VTE and VTE-related death was reduced 13% in the apixaban group, which had the extended VTE prophylaxis, but this difference did not achieve statistical significance. We then focused on the area that was of real interest to us all along, and that's what we call the post-parenteral treatment period, really when we're sure the patients are home. Now the anoxaparin group, which at this point is receiving zero anticoagulation, they're not protected at all, what we found is that their VTE rate for the rest of the 30 days of the trials went up and up and up without any signs of even starting to level off. Meanwhile, the apixaban group, which is getting anticoagulation prophylaxis for the entire 30 days, after that post-parenteral period, their VTE rate almost completely flattens out. And then the gap between the anoxaparin patients and the apixaparin patients during the 30 days is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And when we do a pre-specified exploratory analysis on total VTE-related death and on symptomatic VTE, 
we found that the apixaban group had a 55% reduction, and it was almost statistically significant. So that's encouraging and sort of gives us two ideas, one about the natural history potentially of patients who are not on the therapies, and yes. then potentially a window of how to treat those in future studies. Well, I think ADOPT is really making a great contribution to medicine by really having a shining light about the proper path forward. Uh, it's clear that the next study on extended duration prophylaxis should probably start just about the time of hospital discharge to get rid of all that noise mm -hmm. at the beginning and should focus on the, the truly meaningful symptomatic events and VTE-related death. Yeah, so I assume that that's where you're going next with the studies. You, you think that's where we should be going? Well, whether it's with a Pixaban or with some other anticoagulant, this will be a great opportunity for forward-thinking people to mobilize and conquer the last frontier uh, in VTE prophylaxis. Well, thanks so much for joining us oh, and bringing thank, the science forward. Thank you, Manesh.